Kim Campbell, the first and only female prime minister of Canada, the first baby boomer to be Canadian prime minister, and the only prime minister from British Columbia, but also arguably the worst prime minister in Canadian history, who only served 132 days in office? Let's see whether her time in office warrants the title Worst Prime Minister in today's video. But first, some background to answer the question, who is Kim Campbell? Her first introduction in the political scene didn't take place in federal politics, but rather it occurred in provincial politics for her home province of British Columbia, where she was an unsuccessful candidate for their Provincial Social Credit Party, having run for representative in the riding of Vancouver Centre in the province's capital, coming third out of seven candidates. After which, she opted not to give up, but to increase her name recognition in the party by running for leadership of the Social Credit Party. Admittedly, she finished in last place with only 14 votes. But nonetheless, it was a start, I suppose, and she used the opportunity as a springboard towards her social credit candidacy to be the representative for Vancouver Point Grey, also in the provincial capital, which she finally won by a margin of 2% over her opponent. Although, she soon became dissatisfied with the Social Credit Party, especially due to party leader Bill van der Zalm's stance on abortion, and soon left provincial politics in exchange for the national level, which was a good choice overall, since the Social Credit Party was already experiencing significant infighting, and was soon torn to shreds by other parties such as British Columbia New Democratic Party and BC Liberals. But the fall of social credit is a topic for another day. Instead, let's focus on Campbell's transition to the Federal Progressive Conservative Party, with which she ran for Member of Parliament in the riding of Vancouver Centre, which she won by a margin of 0.4%. After losing provincially in Vancouver Centre, she had won the seat federally, beating everyone's expectations. She looked like a true comeback kid. Her popularity as a rising star kept increasing within the party, as she was made parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Indian and Northern Affairs, under the government of Progressive Conservative Prime Minister Brian Mulroney, soon being promoted even further to Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Her apartment oversaw major legislation on the topics of firearm and sexual assault. In 1993, she even held the position of Minister of Defense in the Mulroney government. But what Kim Campbell didn't expect was that her political career would also end in 1993. The Mulroney government had been extremely unpopular due to various political stances which it had taken over the years, and a worsening economic situation. Since he knew that the party couldn't win under his leadership, Prime Minister Brian Mulroney resigned leaving the Prime Ministry up to a Progressive Conservative Party leadership election. Immediately, people knew that Kim Campbell would be a prominent candidate for the leadership position, and therefore for Prime Minister. Thus, many high-ranking candidates didn't run against her. She would have been practically unopposed had Prime Minister Brian Mulroney not convinced Environment Minister Jean Charest to run against her, because otherwise the election would have looked somewhat undemocratic. But she eventually won with a 52.7% vote, becoming the first female Prime Minister in Canadian history. Many people now criticize Kim Campbell for not doing much during her time as Prime Minister, but Honestly, we don't think that's a justified criticism. 
how much can you do if you're inaugurated 132 days before the Canadian election? And 47, just less than half of those days, are the campaign period. Furthermore, she was extremely active during that time, restructuring government, reducing the number of ministers from 35 to 23, at a time when small government was quite a popular concept, while also adding ministries for health, Canadian heritage, and public security, which still exist to this day. All this despite not being able to attend a single session of Parliament as Prime Minister, because Parliament had already gone into summer recess. Initially, her popularity was quite high. She campaigned vigorously through the summer election season, also known as the Barbecue Circuit. Her personal popularity surpassed that of Liberal leader Jean Chrétien and the Reform Party of Canada under Preston Manning, which had challenged her from the political right. But her popularity wasn't to last for a long time. Her blunt style of communication sometimes came out wrong, resulting in her popularity declining heavily after she announced her candidacy, due to remarks like it being unlikely that the budget would balance by the year 2000, or that a 47-day leadership campaign was no time to discuss complexities of how she would change the political system. The liberal team was capable of taking these sound bites and playing them on repeat, which kept her popularity on the decline, going from being tied with the liberals to the 20% range. But what many people argue to be the finishing blow was a series of attack ads against liberal leader Jean Chrétien, which were intended to reset the political scene and put the PC party on the offensive. Three ads which were meant to change it all, but ended up causing much more of a shift than Kim Campbell ever expected. The second ad appeared to mock Chrétien's case of Bell's palsy, which paralyzed half of his face, asking, and I quote, Is this a prime minister? While still close-up pictures of his face played in the background, media backlash was severe. PC candidates called for the ad to be taken off air, but it was too late. Conservative support was already taking a nosedive, falling into the high teens while the more well-coordinated liberal and reform parties picked up much of what remained in the PC party. Polls shifted to a liberal majority, with reform picking up many seats in western provinces, such as Alberta and Campbell's home province of British Columbia. The PC party went from a majority of 156 seats in parliament Two, two, yes, you heard that right, two seats across the entirety of Canada, one in Quebec and one in New Brunswick. Notice as well how I didn't say British Columbia. Kim Campbell was the third ever prime minister to lose her own seat, the worst ever election loss in Canadian history. The only remaining PC members of Parliament were Elsie Wayne and Jean Charest, who ran against Campbell back in the leadership election, being unanimously elected as the party's leader in 1995, leading the PCs through the long road to try and regain popularity, helping the party survive after the disastrous election of 1993. Kim Campbell was likely the worst progressive conservative party leader in Canadian history. Under her leadership, the party was bled dry from all directions. In the weakest election showing for the PCs in Canadian history, only thanks to later leaders like Jean Charest and Peter McKay 
did the party survive and merge with the Reform Party, now making up the Conservative Party of Canada. Kim Campbell was not some inherently bad prime minister. Her performance in office, given the time frame, wasn't bad. It was because her campaigning and political organizing abilities on a national level were terrible, absolutely terrible. That's why the party collapsed. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and liking for more content like it. As well, in the description we've included some further readings. Have a good day. Bye!